is Heather. All right, a long time ago, I posted a video about vegan protein powders, and that is consistently one of my top viewed videos. I get tons of questions to this day, and I also get tons of requests for an update because things have changed a lot since I posted that video. I thought there were a ton of vegan protein powders available at the time, but now there are even more. So I wanted to post an update and also refresh a few things that I said in that video. So first of all, I wanna be clear that vegans do not need protein powder in order to get enough protein or in order to get complete proteins. Vegans can get more than enough protein for basic needs from whole foods and they can get all of the amino acids that they need to be healthy from whole plant foods. All right, so protein powders are something specific that people go to to reach a certain goal. So it has nothing to do with being vegan. Non-vegans use protein powders, vegans use protein powders. So these are just options for vegans who want to use a protein powder and are looking for a high quality plant source. Now, why do people use protein powders? Well, basically it's to increase the amount of calories from protein relative to the amount of calories from carbohydrates and fats. If you increase the amount of whole foods that you're eating, you'll get more protein, but you'll also get more carbohydrates and fat. So an average vegan diet hovers around 12 to 15% of calories from protein. Athletes tend to look for 15 to 20% of their calories from protein. So that's why athletes tend to look to protein powders to boost the relative amount of protein. It's not about the overall amount of protein. It's about getting that percentage higher in relation to carbohydrates and fats. For most people, it is no problem to have their normal level of calories and have 12 to 15% protein. But for people who are looking to build muscle or have specific athletic goals, they might need a higher percentage of protein. The other thing I find is that for myself personally, after a long run, after a hard workout, after a roller derby practice, I don't wanna be sitting down eating a giant plate of beans and greens. While those foods are wonderful for protein in general, they're not really the thing that I wanna to turn to after some hard exercise. In those cases, what I wanna do is have a smoothie with a little bit of protein powder, just enough to help repair the muscles that were broken down during the workout. So the other thing I wanna say is that you cannot eat your way to muscles. A lot of people take protein powder thinking that it's gonna just help them build muscle. The work comes when you do your workout. Protein, any source of protein is just a support to help your muscles repair. Another time when I might recommend protein powders for someone is if they're underweight and they're looking to gain weight. Protein powder is an easy way to add calories to a smoothie that you can have between meals to help you gain back weight if you're underweight. Now, there is an article on my website, there's a link down below this video, that goes into a lot more depth on all of the details in terms of choosing a protein powder, why people use protein powder and all that. So go check that out if you want more info. One of the most popular parts of that post is a chart that I put together. What I did was I compared a bunch of different brands of vegan protein powders. I standardized them to give 15 grams of protein because some brands will tell you to have two tablespoons, some brands will tell you to have four tablespoons, and they have different amounts of protein in those servings. So I wanted to give a fair comparison across the board and I have standardized it to 15 grams of protein. And then it tells you how many servings you need to get that and that will tell you how much you get out of each package, how much fat you get along with that, how much carbohydrate is with that as well. And I also broke down the cost based on Amazon, which should be available to most people. So go check that chart out if you wanna know more. And what I wanted to do in this video is outline a few brands that I didn't have access to before. Some of them are new, some of them I just hadn't tried. Starting with Vega, Vega has a wide range of products now. When I first did that post, they really only had one. It was a powder for protein. They now have bars, they sell electrolytes, and they also sell this one, Protein and Greens. This is one of my favorites. It mixes protein with some greens powder. And Vega always does a blend of proteins. So it comes from pea, 
sachi inchi, hemp, and brown rice. And then this one also has a greens blend made up of alfalfa grass, spinach powder, broccoli powder, and kale powder. And comes along with papaya powder, which is a digestive enzyme. So this is really nice. Um, the vanilla flavor, I find, makes my smoothies taste like ice cream. So if I want a real treat, I love having this one. The only downside is that it's so good that I drink my smoothie really quickly. So there's that one. Vega also does a performance protein, which is a recovery protein. This includes branched chain amino acids, which are absorbed very quickly and help repair muscle as quickly as possible. Um, it also has a digestive enzyme blend and L-glutamine, which supports your immune system. And after you exercise, your immune system is depleted. So protein powders that include L-glutamine help boost up your immune system as you recover from a workout. So Vega was very, very nice, very tasty. They've really got the flavor down and um, again, a wide variety of products that you can get from them. Okay, I also tried some Sun Warrior this time. I hadn't tried this in my last video and so many people love this brand. I thought it was great. They have a classic protein, which is brown rice, and they have a blend, which is pea, cranberry protein, and hemp seed. There are a few companies now using cranberry protein, which I find really interesting. Um, this one also includes cinnamon extract. So Sun Warrior, very nice, very smooth, great to add to a smoothie. I talked about Plant Fusion last time. They do a blend of proteins from pea, artichoke, amaranth, and quinoa. And they also include L-glutamine for the immune system support. They have a digestive enzyme in here as well that helps you digest and utilize this protein. So this is a great one. I love this brand. They've also now come out with something called Food, which is the Everything Shake. So this is where they've combined protein with a whole food vitamin mineral. They have an essential fatty acid blend, which is flax, algalin, and sunflower. So that's land and sea based omega-3s. They also have um, probiotics and digestive enzymes in here. And one thing that I find interesting, they've also included vegan vitamin D3. So this really is kind of a multivitamin. Another one I hadn't tried before was Manitoba Harvest 70% protein. I love hemp protein in general. It's a very sustainable production and um, it has a lot of omega-3 naturally. But regular hemp protein has so much fiber that I've never really enjoyed it in a smoothie. I tend to use it in porridge or in making cookies or muffins or something. And in those cases, it's wonderful. But what I found was the 70% protein was actually wonderful in smoothies, particularly the vanilla flavor and um, great texture and mixed really nicely into my smoothies. Now, a couple of new brands that I've come across. Sprout Living makes this, they call it Epic plant-based protein and they do different flavors. This is chocolate maca. I also have a green kingdom. I really liked this one. It includes greens powder and vanilla lucuma. Um, they do a great blend of proteins. So they have sprouted brown rice, yellow pea, sacha inchi, which is a great source of omega-3, and cranberry protein, again. Um, they also include some superfoods, like this one has cocoa, maca, Ceylon cinnamon, lucuma, heirloom, red banana, Jerusalem artichoke, and baobab fruit. So those give you antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. So this is great. Um, it's very smooth. It blends really, really well into a smoothie. I've been really enjoying this chocolate maca flavor, and I will have a smoothie recipe for you using this later on this week. So stay tuned for that. The last one I'll talk about today is called Yuv, and it's called a nutritional shake. So it includes vegan protein from rice and pea, but it also includes a lot of other things, fiber, omega, uh, L-glutamine for immune. It also includes trans resveratrol and NAC, so it calls that its healthy aging blend. There's also probiotics, uh, some berries for vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, a greens blend, chlorella, spirulina, kale, alfalfa, broccoli. And this one also includes chia seeds. So this was the only powder 
that I found I could mix directly with water and really enjoy. The rest of them I love in smoothies, but this one I could actually have with just water. And I think it was partly about the chia seeds. It gave it a nice texture and the chia seeds of course absorb the water so they give it a little bit more body. So those are just a few. I know there are tons more out there and I have some others posted on my site. If you check out the article down below this video, you can get more details and check out my chart comparing all of the different brands. Leave me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Let me know which one you like. What's your favorite vegan protein powder? And if you don't use protein powder, what do you like to put into your smoothie to give it a boost? Maybe cooked quinoa, rolled oats, almond butter, something else? Let me know, leave me a comment, and be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more videos this month and next month as part of Smoothie Fest. Now, following the interest in my half marathon results from a few weeks ago, I'm putting together a workshop specifically on nutrition for vegan runners. If you're interested in more info, I'll post a link down below. You can go check it out. All right, have a good one, guys. Bye.